I wanted to briefly go into the Internet Protocol Control Protocol, uh, otherwise known as IPCP. So in iOS, we can automate the uh, assignment of IP addresses through IPCP, similar to using DHCP. However, there are some things that you got to be aware of when using IC IPCP, such as the offering of the subnet mask. So you can actually configure IPCP to give out masks to clients. However, iOS will just choose to ignore that and install always install a slash 32 mask. So with mo most routing protocols, that wouldn't be a problem. However, with RIP, we have this validate update source enabled by default, which will conflict with uh, IPCP because remember IPCP, we do not have the correct mask. We have slash 32 mask, so RIP will not function. A way to get around this is by not using RIP or IPCP at all, but that's just what we gotta do, right? So for my example, I'm using two routers. Router one will be the IPCP server, so to say, and router two will be the client. So router two will request the 10012 address in this case. And I'm gonna use RIP to verify if I have connectivity from the loopback of router one to the loopback. Of router 2. So let's get started on that configuration. I'm going to do most of that in Notepad. So let me configure term terminal. The first thing with IPCP is specifying a local pool. I'm just going to call that IPCP and in my case my pool is going to consist of one address. If you have multiple addresses, you can specify a range over here but I'm not going to do that in this case. It's just going to be the address for router 2. Next I'm going to go on my serial interface and the first thing that I want to put in here is specify the encapsulation to be PPP because the default encapsulation for serial interfaces is HDLC on Cisco devices. Next I'm specifying my own address and I am linking this interface to the peer default IP address pool which is basically the command that enables IPCP assignment on this interface. So instead of doing that, I could have done the peer IP, uh, default IP address and then the address of router 2. This will give me the exact same results as using a pool with one address. Next, I'm going to send over the mask. The way to do that is PPP IPCP mask and then the subnet mask. And I'm going to specify this peer neighbor router command. So with PPP, uh, the default is to create slash 32 routes for each connected interface. So with HDLC, we'll only see, for instance, this network when we're creating a, uh, when we're assigning IP addresses. However, with PPP, we will see the 10.0.12.1 slash 32 over here, and the 10.0.12.2 slash 32 over here as well. So this peer neighbor route basically prevents that from happening. However, we actually need that command with IPCP. So luckily for us, it is enabled by default, but I just wanted to put in uh, put it in here to make a point and to make sure that it's actually online. So that's the basic configuration for uh, PPP. Let me paste in my rip config. So this rip is just going to be enabled in the 10.0.12 network and the 1.2 network. And I'm leaving the validate update source out of there for now. So let me add a no shot in here as well. And we're basically done with this configuration. So very quick, very easy. Let's configure this. And for router 2, I do not obviously do not need the IPCP settings. However, I do want this interface to be PPP. Instead of an address, I want an address negotiated. I do not need the peer default IP address either, however I am going to request a mask and I can leave the rest in place. So that's the configuration for router 2. So if I do show IP interface brief, I will see that I have received an address from router 1 and it is IPCP. If I do show IP interface 010, we can see that it is by determined by IPCP. The peer address is router 1. However, as you can see here, our actual mask is slash 32. Even though we requested a mask from router 1, and router 1 provided us or offered us an address 
that is slash 24. However, iOS just choose, chose to completely ignore that. So if I do show IP route connected, for instance, we can see that we have a slash 32 route for the 10.0.12.1 and we have slash 32 for our own address. So that's basically what PPP does by default. And we need that in order for IPCP to function. So let's see if I have basic connectivity and I do to the other side to show IP route rip. I do not have any rip routes right now. So let me see if rip is actually configured here. And it is configured here as well. Just do show IP protocols. Do show IP protocols and do show IP wrap rip. Ah, I see I do have it over here. And let's see if I have it over here. So I have not even received the route for the loopback address of router one. So if I do show IP interface brief, we can see that we do have it online here. So I have received the route from router two. However, on router two, I have not received any rip routes. This is because of the validate update source. So the way to fix that is go into router rip and say no validate update source, and I'm going to clear the routes while I'm at it. So if I do show IP route rip, now I can see that I have received the route for the loopback of router one. If I try to reach that, now it's working just fine. So we need the no validate update source on the IPCP client. We do not necessarily need it on the IPCP uh, server. So that's basically it for IPCP. Just remember that it relies on PPP and there are some problems if you want to implement it alongside the routing information protocol. Thank you for your time.